All right, this last section is about mutations. So what happens if the DNA code gets changed? So we're going to talk about two basic types of mutations. Even though we've already talked about chromosome mutations, like a deletion of a section of a chromosome or a missing chromosome, um, this is different. Here we're talking about what's called a point mutation. So we're talking about just changing one letter of a code, not changing an entire chromosome or a big section of a chromosome. So there's two basic types. The first one is called a substitution. It's kind of self-explanatory. A substitution is where one letter gets substituted for another. So here, A-A-G-U-C becomes A-A-C-U-C. So one letter of the code got changed. So what will that cause to happen? Now this is actually in a, uh, an RNA because I, I used use, but this could be a DNA mutation too. So it could be a silent mutation, meaning there's no effect. And that's because of wobble. Remember, sometimes, a, a, for example, AAG and AAC might both code for the same amino acid, in which case changing that letter will not affect the outcome, so the amino acids will be the same. A second possibility is you get what's called a missense mutation, where um, this does code for a different amino acid, and so every other amino acid in the protein is correct, but that one amino acid is incorrect. Um, and a good example of this is how the mutation for sickle cell came about. So one letter of the DNA code is incorrect in the gene that people carry for sickle cell. If that letter is wrong, then when the protein is made <clears throat> for hemoglobin, which is uh, what that protein gene codes for, one amino acid is wrong. And it turns out that the amino acid that's put there that's incorrect has very different properties than the one that's supposed to go there. So instead of the red blood cell folding up into this nice circular shape, it collapses and forms this sickle shape, and that's sickle cell anemia. And a third possibility is a nonsense mutation. What if the code changes to a stop codon very early on in the sequence? Well, that would mean that the rest of the protein never gets made, because once it hits stop, that protein's going to break off. So maybe you don't make a protein at all. So this is a substitution. The other possibility is an insertion or a deletion. And again, this is self-explanatory. This is where an extra letter gets added or a letter is missing. So A-A-G-U-C becomes A-A-A-G-U-C. So you've got an extra letter there. Now, this is actually a much bigger problem than you would think um, because, remember, bases are read three letters at a time. So your cell is not going to know there's an extra or a missing letter. It's still going to read three letters at a time. Um, and so what happens is you get something called a frame shift, meaning that the reading frame gets shifted. So you had, let's say, AAA, GCC, AGA, UCC. Okay, if the A, so these code for specific amino acids. If the A gets deleted, this A, now you have A, A, G, C, C, A, G, A, U, and a C, C left over here. These are going to code for completely different amino acids than before. Um, and so you're going to end up with basically complete nonsense. And I gave the example here of a sentence made of three-letter words, the cat ate the rat. If I delete the C in cat, now it's the, at, 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 her, at. it makes no sense. All the, all the words are wrong. And so that's what's going to happen in a frame shift mutation is you're probably going to get a completely different protein, a completely faulty protein. You're not going to make a protein. Um, both of these things, a substitution or an insertion or deletion, are called point mutations because we're changing just a single point in the DNA code. Unlike a chromosomal mutation, like an insertion or a deletion, when we talked about a whole section of a chromosome being inserted or deleted, duplicated, translocation, all of those chromosome things. Remember, you have 20,000 genes on a chromosome. So if you change one letter, you're messing up one gene out of 20,000 on that chromosome. If you're missing a whole section of a chromosome, you might, you might be missing 100 genes. And that may be a much bigger problem than one messed up gene. This is just a picture showing of some of the damage that is done by gamma rays on chromosomes. Lots of things damage chromosomes, UV light, x-rays, different kinds of chemicals. But... Um, it, a lot of times, it's just random mutation. It has nothing to do with anything you've been exposed to. And finally, just to summarize, we've gone through different definitions of what a gene was. 
Um, back in Mendel's time, they didn't even use the word. There was just a factor that was part of your inheritance. And then we talked about it being a section of a chromosome when we got to the chromosome chapter. And now, and this is really the definition you should know, what is a gene really? You know, big B and little b, it's really a DNA sequence coding for making a specific polypeptide or protein chain. And that polypeptide chain is going to give you some kind of a trait. If you're tall, it's because you have a gene for a hormone that makes you grow taller. Or if your hair is brown, you have a gene for a protein that makes your hair brown or curly. Uh, you know, if you are lactose intolerant, it's because you have a messed up gene that codes for an enzyme and you're missing that enzyme. So genes are codes on your DNA for making specific proteins, and those proteins are what determine our traits.